Okay, in this video we're going to talk about proportional and non-proportional relationships. In order for the relationship to be proportional, uh, equations need to be in the form of y equals mx. And I'm going to tell you what this means in a few minutes. Um, also, ratios need to be equivalent. And then the last thing, when graphed, it has to be a straight line and it has to pass through the origin. Those are the main three things that you need to keep in mind. The equation needs to look like y equals mx. The ratios have to be equivalent. And when you graph it, it has to be a straight line that passes through the origin. And the origin is that point where the x and the y axis meet in the center. Okay. So if you have your x and your y axis like this, the origin, by the way, this is the x, that's your y. The origin is this point right here. So if you have a line that looks like this whoops not a very straight line something like that let's say that this passes through the origin then it's linear it's a uh, proportional relationship okay and I'm gonna talk to you more about this in just a few minutes now non-proportional relationship is if the equation is if it's in the form of y equals mx plus b plus another number b is just a number and m is just a number the y and the x will always be in your equation or if the ratios are not equivalent or when graphed it's a straight line but it does not pass through the origin okay so basically the opposite of the first three let's talk a little bit more about that here's some examples we're going to compare these examples to the form that we just saw okay if it's in the form of y equals m x then we know it's going to be proportional. For example, this one here, we have a y, that's good. We have an x, that's good. And that 3, that's our m. So we know this is in the form of y equals mx. So we know that this uh, equation would be a proportional relationship that we're talking about here in this equation. Okay, if you look at this one here, we have y equals mx, because there's your y, there's your x, there's your m. But I have another number that I'm adding. I'm adding that 3. So that is going to be my plus b right here. So that's why this would be a non-proportional relationship because of this plus b right here. That's your b value. And I'm going to talk to you about what this b value stands for and what that m value stands for too. Okay, so then this one is going to be non-proportional. Proportional spell that I proportion okay and then this one what do you think y equals mx it looks like it doesn't have a plus anything or minus anything so that's good uh, there is a y there is the x and in this case the m is a negative 5 so that's okay it is going to be proportional okay and on this one here we have a y equals mx and remember we have plus b right Remember what I told you when you have a minus sign, you always change it to a plus sign and because you're going to add, instead of subtract, you're going to add the opposite of the number. So we're going to change the positive 4 to a negative 4. So we actually are adding a number. We're adding a negative 4. That's our B value. Therefore, this one is also non-proportional. Okay? So that's what you have to remember. You have to remember the equation from now on. That's part of uh, part of math that you're going to be using this in algebra, all the way up to I don't know geometry and everything. So make sure that you remember this equation from now on. Y equals mx. Now let's talk about what that m stands for, and that m stands for the slope of the line. And we don't need to be going into a lot of uh, detail at this point on how to find that m and what m, what the value of it means. But basically, that M tells you how steep your line is going to be. If it's going to be a little bit laying down, if maybe it's going to be another one kind of looks like this, your M value tells you how steep, how standing up it is, or how laying down it is. Okay? That's what the M comes from. That's the, the M is your slope. So I want you to write this down, and you probably don't have space right there, but I want you to write down right here. Y equals MX this right here that's your slope of the line in other words your slant we're talking about the slant of the line 
how slant how much slanted it is um and then if you have that plus b let me put a red pen because we're gonna have to make sure this is only the yeah, only the um non-proportional relationships have the plus b so the plus b that is what is called the y intercept and again this information that i'm telling you right now you'll see it again in algebra and in high school and some of you might take algebra next year but uh you will definitely use it in geometry you'll use it in trigonometry you'll use it in a lot of classes math classes from now on so make sure you remember y equals mx plus b Okay, and there is a little video here on YouTube that I wish I could play for you, but I can't. Uh, the recording won't work. So I want you to go to this right here, and I want you to type this address right here. You can pause it, write it down, and then go watch that video. Okay, it's a little song that might, might help you remember the Y equals MX plus B. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. Now let's talk about these two graphs. Remember what we talked about in the beginning of this uh, video, that when graphed, the straight line has to pass through the origin. And we talked about the origin is where that y and the x meet, that point. So I'm going to look down on those two graphs. And here's the origin right here, because this is the x, the y-axis and the x-axis. Here's the origin right here in this graph. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to say this one does not pass through the origin, this one does. So that's why this one is non-proportional, but this one is proportional. It's that easy. You just have to remember the rules. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at this too. What do, what do you think about this one? Proportional or non-proportional? Remember the origin is this point right there, so it does pass through it. So hopefully you said proportional. Now this one, the origins are over here, and it doesn't pass through it, so this is going to be non-proportional. Now you guys remember that form, y equals mx plus b, right? This b right here, I told you it was called the y-intercept, because this is your y-axis right here, right? This, y, this is your y-axis. This is your x-axis down here. Well, in your y-axis, you see where this line crosses that, y, that uh, place right there? Let's say we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say we're seven units up. That's a positive number, right? That would be positive seven. So in the equation for this line, it would be something plus seven. That's what that seven means. That B, that number that you add or subtract. If it was a subtracting, if you're subtracting, or if you're adding a negative number, then that means that the uh, line would cross down here on the negative, let's say like negative three then you have a line that would cross at negative 3. Okay, let's pretend that's crossing right up there. So that's what that B means. And again, M is the slope. B is the Y-intercept. In other words, where that line intercepts the Y-axis. And uh, the Y and the X, they're always going to be in your problem because you always have a Y and an X value. Now, again, you don't have to worry about all detail of what a B means or what the M means. Yes, yeah, so of right now, but I do want you to understand how to tell if it's going to be a proportion relationship or not by looking at the graph. And again, if it passes through the origin, then it is a proportional. If it does not pass through the origin, then it's a not it's not proportional. It's non-proportional. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the uh, ratios here because we this is the last thing we have to look at. The ratios are equivalent. The ratios have to be equivalent if it's going to be a proportion. Or proportional relationship what do I mean by that well here's your X and here's your Y if you write the ratio of Y over X that's 13 over 1 right if you write the ratio here is 25 over 2 if you write the ratio here will be 37 over 3 here will be 49 over 4 and here will be 61 over 5 if all these ratios are equivalent to each other then it's a proportion It's proportional but if it's not then it won't be and one quick way to do that is to just compare them to each other. 13 over 1, and then you put 25 over 2. And you can do that simple method that a lot of you like to call butterfly. So if you look at these two right here, 2 times 13, that's 26, right? And 1 times 25, that's 25. They are not equal to each other. So because they're not equal to each other, these two didn't work. So my answer is not 
proportional because the ratios are not equal to each other. If you had gotten 26 equal 26, then I will have to check the next two, and then I will have to check the next two, and then check the next two. And if they all work, then I know I have a proportional relationship. Okay, they all have to work in order for them to be proportional. Now let's look at this one real quick. Uh, the ratio here, would remember we're writing the y over the x, not the other way around. This number over this number. So it's going to be 7 over 1. Here is 14 over 2, 21 over 3, 28 over 4, and 35 over 5. If I'm going to check this, I'm going to have 7 over 1 equals 14 over 2, right? And if I do that butterfly with 7 times 2, 14, and 1 times 14 is 14. So I know they're equal to each other. So these two ratios are equivalent. But what about these two? So you will have to go through and check them all. I want you to go ahead and do this for the rest of them. I want you to do it for this one. I want you to do it for this one down here and for this one down here. And when you get to class, we're going to talk about which ones were proportional and which ones were not. Okay, I'm not going to do this ones for you because I want you to get the practice. Okay, and hopefully maybe you can see another way of doing it without the butterfly because that's a lot of multiplication. Maybe you can find a different way. And if you do, if you p find a pattern, let me know in class and maybe we can... Uh, Discuss that in class. Thank you.